The Paleolithic diet, sometimes referred to as the origin diet, the prehistoric diet, the caveman diet. A diet that became popular due to Dr. Lauren Cordain's book, The Paleo Diet. Dr. Cordain calls it a diet based on the way nature intended us to eat. He has developed a list of do's and don'ts based off the research he has compiled on the diets of over 200 different hunter and gatherer tribes. The diet emphasizes four groups of nutrients, lean, non-dairy protein, vegetables, fruits, and healthy fats, and calls for the restriction of all grains, legumes, bad fats, refined sugars, dairy, and fatty meats. This diet does not claim to be easy, however, it does promise some amazing results. So in order to see just how difficult this diet is, the results one can expect, and the process by which average people go paleo, we will follow a series of participants that have decided to eat paleo. Some of them are trying out the diet as a 30-day challenge, while others are committed to the diet for life. Through their journey, we will find out what they've learned, if they will continue, and the ins and outs of this unique diet. Let's first find out what motivated them to go paleo. I wanted to try something new that I haven't done before, see what kind of results I could get. I just recognized that the school's cafeteria like doesn't have a lot of healthy, good options, and I felt like um, the school was just a really bad place to be eating. So when I heard about the paleo and it was like, well, try eating with these restrictions on top. I think that just was like a cool thing to think about and a cool thing to try. Um, because like, is this doable? Can I eat? healthy at this school where I don't think anything is healthy. Alright, can you tell me a little bit about how you got into the paleo diet? Um, well, a couple of reasons. One, um, my, well, really a lot of it started when my husband got cancer um, and then went through treatment was successfully treated. Um, we really wanted to just be as healthy as we possibly could. We wanted to take a lot of um, unhealthy things out of our diet and uh, I also wanted to lose some weight. He had lost a lot of weight, didn't recommend the diet and I went to the family doctor and he I expressed you know, some help and desire to do that to lose some weight and, and he said the easiest thing in the world was just to eat paleo. What was it like to give up all processed foods, refined sugars, dairy, grains, and even legumes? It was really difficult because there was hardly any food options on the campus. And I mean, I... Like, I'm starving day in and day out, and I'm sick of just eating cold food. Today at lunch, I had stir-fry that was hot. But then the sauce I find out that you use to make it, it's not even paleo. I'm sorry, but I'm getting really frustrated. Like, it's harder to stay paleo than I thought. At first, what I didn't like was that it was hard to find paleo stuff, especially when I was traveling. Um, the first weekend I did it, I was in Oshkosh, and I had to go to a health food store and find, like, raw nuts and stuff like that. It was just a little bit harder to forage for food. But once I was able to go to the grocery store and get paleo foods at my house, and, uh, it was a lot easier. As far as me not having dairy in my diet, I don't miss yeah. it at all. I don't miss the milk, I don't miss the cheese, I don't miss See, any, I was a bit any dairy except for ice cream. Um, so. I bought a pint of Ben & Jerry's ice cream and I literally ate the entire thing. Literally. I, was, I had an empty stomach, I was hungry and stressed, so I just got the ice cream and ate it. No beans was a big deal for me. Um, and I don't even know why no beans was a big deal for me. But, like, the fact that I couldn't have beans made me want beans. I wasn't a big bean person to begin with. This raises an interesting point. Why aren't beans part of the paleo diet? I thought they were considered a healthy source of protein. So, I do not eat beans. And, and really the reason is, just like grains, it, it's, you know, because of the, the phytic acid, the basically anti-nutrients that kind of bind to the to the nutrients in legumes and, and make like they kind of render them unavailable to your body so the nutrients that are in legumes aren't really bioavailable to you so like that protein is not bioavailable protein and uh, you know, a lot of the other nutrients aren't aren't you're not able to break them down 
mm -hmm. and also the the leptins in in um, in legumes. So like a the intact protein that causes a lot of gut issues. So you can't really break them down. They kind of leak into your uh, leak into your bloodstream when obviously they don't belong. Causes a lot of inflammation, and that's why you get a lot of the gut and respiratory issues or digestive issues from legumes. So you get a lot of people that can't really break them down. It seems like the next logical question is what types of foods were our participants able to eat? I think the most common question I got on the paleo diet was um, what do you eat? Um, I think I guess people think if you can't eat bread and cheese that you can't eat anything. Um, but it's paleo diets more about basing your decisions on real food and not so much what cavemen would eat, but what just humans are supposed to eat, um, like meat and vegetables and fruit and just things that come from the earth and the ground and not from a factory. Protein, I usually use bison because it's gamey. And one of the real treats that I had if I miss bread was the pizza, pizza. dough that Betty made of coconut flour. That turned out excellent and it makes for that crunchy feel that you miss from not having bread. But So these are the flours that I cook with. Okay. So I cook with almond flour and I cook with coconut flour and occasionally I will use, this is my tapioca flour. Okay. Um, and cashew. I really got to where I like the, the cashew meal. Yeah, and to me, like that doesn't taste diet, it doesn't taste, it's a ginger cookie. So I've been eating a lot of cashews and almonds since Wednesday. That helps when I burp, it tastes like nuts, which, you know, if you like that kind of thing, it's cool. The paleo diet has developed a reputation for helping people lose weight, get healthier, and gain more energy. Let's see what types of results our participants noticed. Uh, the biggest results I noticed off the diet were more, um, there were less uh, physical, like changes in my body, um, noticeable results as far as um, mental. I noticed I had a lot more, um, I got rid of a lot of the brain fog, uh, which is, you know, a lot of people have first thing in the morning, it's hard to get up and get going and get out of bed. Um, a lot of people think they need coffee for that. Um, but it's really just your body craving uh, the bad stuff a lot of the time. So I noticed if I started my mornings off with water and a banana, um, something lighter like that, I had a lot more mental clarity, um, a lot more energy, and just felt um, a lot better starting my day off and throughout the day as well. A lot more energy. The, the major difference in my health has been blood pressure. Uh, relatively dramatic drop in blood pressure from a high of 155 over 90 something uh, to down to 107 over 70. So is this diet just a fad or is it something our participants are going to stick to for life? And I think I can definitively say I'm going to stick with this diet after it ends but I will allow myself cheat days. And if going forward, what I'll probably do is stick to the paleo diet when I'm at home. But when I travel, I might be a little bit more lenient. You know, I'll try to do paleo if I can, but if I have to eat a pizza, I'll eat a pizza. Um, I think the paleo diet is more of a philosophy to live by than what Americans call a fad diet. I don't think the paleo diet's a fad. I don't think it's a temporary thing. I think it's just being aware and making... Good, it's choices. one first off it's me a diet it's something you're gonna do for a certain amount of time to reach a specific goal and then you're gonna eat normal this is how we eat this is how we plan to eat for the rest of our lives it's the easiest thing in the world I my, I see no nutritional value of adding pasta and bread and sugar back into our diet so should you go paleo the answer may be more complex than just yes or no the diet is an idealistic approach to eating that stresses the importance of clean, natural foods. But most people would agree that being 100% paleo in today's world would be next to impossible. 
Nobody's really 100%. In, in, in today's society, I guess it's pretty close to impossible. I think it's really hard for anybody to do a full-out paleo diet. And I almost, I would almost argue that to do a full-out paleo diet is unreasonable just because of the society we live in. But even if you're not 100% paleo, there's still something to learn from going on a diet like this. It definitely helped me to become better about following a healthier diet. And because I did it for a month, it, it, I got enough practice that it became more second nature. And it'll be easier to just kind of live my lifestyle that way. Not, when I go to the store, I'll just remember to not buy foods that aren't paleo. You know, if I don't have those in my house, then I won't eat them. <laughs> just to be more aware of what I'm eating and why I'm eating it. Um, and just being more conscious, like at the cafeteria I don't have to grab the slice of pizza and the chicken nuggets because they're there and they're fast. Um, I can make a salad and that salad will taste good and I'll like the salad more than the chicken fingers anyway. You must pay attention to your nutrition, like it must be the most important thing. Is the paleo diet right for you? That's for you to decide, but ultimately no matter what diet you are or aren't on, it's important to pay attention to your nutrition. And everyone can benefit from eating less processed foods and more fruits and vegetables.